Hi, my name is Katie, and I'm one of the librarians with Lone Star College North Harris. In today's Making Zines episode, we're going to be looking at the different methods for binding zines. Our last type of binding is the perfect binding. This one involves gluing pages into the spine. It's the same type of binding used on a lot of commercial paperbacks and other books today. We'll need a few different supplies. So in addition to our usual scissors, ruler, and pencil, we'll need the pages for our zine. We'll need a cover for this project, and a cover is required for this type of binding. We'll need some kind of clips to hold the pages together, and we'll also need some glue. You can use any variety of glue that you happen to have. I'm just using good old Elmer's glue here. It doesn't have to be clear, it can be white as well. And a paintbrush lets you spread that glue around. Okay, let's get started. First thing we'll need to do is go ahead and cut our pages. So you can use any size pages for this, but because I do need a lot of pages, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my pages smaller. This time I'm gonna make them four by six inches. The biggest thing with the perfect binding is just to make sure that all your pages are the same size. So whatever size you use, just consistently make the pages the same. Now that we have our pages ready to go, next thing we're going to need to do is put our pages together. So for our cover, we're actually going to need a cover piece that goes over both widths of my page, so front and back, and then also the width of the spine. So first step is really going to be to get our pages as straight as we can. We want to get one nice smooth clean edge, so just tap them on two of the sides, so the bottom and the side just to get all the pages lined up properly. Once we get our nice clean edge, we can go ahead and clip those pages together. To hold my pages, I'm just gonna use binder clips, but you can really use anything that you can to push those pages together and hold them in place. So large paper clips, hair clips, whatever you happen to have. And that holds our section together. Now we have our nice spine here. So we're gonna go ahead and glue those pages together. So I'm just gonna grab my glue. I'm gonna go ahead and put a bead right down the spine of my book. So right down the edges of the pages. take our paintbrush and we're going to smooth that glue out just to make sure that it covers all the pages. The pages in here are glued in just on their very tips so we want to make sure that the glue touches them pretty well and it's evenly dispersed. Don't worry if the glue is a little wet that makes the edges of your pages a little crinkly. It'll dry itself back out.
Now that our pages are glued together, we just have to let that glue dry. So let it sit for about an hour or so and come back to it. Now that our pages are glued together, we can go ahead and take off the binder clips. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and make our cover. So I'm gonna leave about an eighth of an inch gap around the sides of my book. So notice I leave an eighth there and there, and I'm gonna draw a line for the spine in the middle. Once I know where the spine is on that side, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up my pages onto the spine along that line I just drew. Mark the other side of the spine. And I just wanna confirm that I have plenty of room in order to make my back side of my cover. Now, because I want my front and my back cover to be the same size, I'm just gonna go ahead and measure how much I put on my front. Make that mark, you can see, yep, it's there. And I'm going to make the same measurement for my back. So on the other side of the spine line. And draw a straight line there. Next, we're going to figure out the height. And then put my book down. Make my eighth an inch. And mark my eighth of an inch above the book cover. draw a straight line there as well. Next I'll cut along these lines. Now that we have our cover, we need to go ahead and make the spine lines a little stronger. So I'm just gonna use this as a straight edge along my spine, and I'm just gonna press really hard with the pencil along that same line I already marked. This is just gonna give me a bit of a crease there and start to curve the page. I'll do the same thing on the second line. Now we can start bending that through. So I can kind of gently start folding it, lining my front and back edges together. Now I don't want to press a crease down the middle. We're actually looking to make the width of that spine right there. So kind of gently fold the edge. Now we're going to fold along these lines. So I'm going to fold it back first and then forwards on that line. I'm going to do the same thing on the other line as well. With our spine formed, we can go ahead and grab our pages and insert them into the cover. It should fit pretty nicely with our eighth inch around each side. Okay, next up, we're back with our glue. And we're gonna put some glue right in the edges of the spine on the book cover. Make sure you leave the eighth inch gap at the top and the bottom as well. Use our paintbrush again and just spread that out between those spine lines. Make sure it's well covered. Insert our book pages right into the cover where we want them. So evenly between the top and bottom of the spine. We can go ahead and close those pages. Make 
make sure we push that spine up against the pages of the book. Push that on in there. And once we have it ready, we're just gonna go ahead and use binder clips along that edge. Now we just have to leave this to dry. So again, depending on your glue, it can take anywhere from an hour to a few hours. Now that it's dry, you can go ahead and pull the binding clips off. And our perfect binding should be done. You can see we have a clear spine, white cover, and pages. That's a perfect binding.